Alright, so in this tutorial we're going to be discussing how to match multiple regular expressions um, in your one note box. Because if you can recall from last tutorial, Rubula actually matches every single string it can inside of the uh, test box area. Whereas with the method I was showing last time for how to match strings with uh, RPG Maker, it only allows you to get the first match. Not the second, not the third, only the first match you can find. Alright, so in this tutorial we're going to be discussing how to have multiple matches of the same regular expression in your notebox. But before we do that, I need to make the regular expression for the current tutorial because mistakenly or stupidly I deleted it in the last tutorial. Damn it! All right, so let's just make it now. Make it real quick. Um, battle theme. It's the exact same uh, growth expression I made in the last tutorial, probably. All right. Don't need a space. We do need words, so give me words. Then, comma, not needed. Space, not needed but you will have to have at least either a comma or a space in the actual note tag for this to work All right. so you don't need so you either have to have a comma or a space okay now digits because uh, that's for volume so um, the words here are, is for the actual name of the for the actual name of the file and the D here is for the volume now again um, uh, that's the comma, then space, sweet, and back to D plus. Okay. So now we have words, uh, the word I mean, then volume, then pitch in there. Alright. Now we have to uh, actually put that into an enemy. So for this one, I'm going to do slime again, since I already have one set up for slime. Where are you? There you are. Alright, battle theme. Uh, your battle theme can be uh, eight. Then uh, how about sixty for your volume and one hundred and twenty for your pitch? All right, play it. The game. Speak to Wonder Woman. All right, that is definitely working. All right, that's you. And back to normal battle theme. All right, so that works. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to have multiple matches, meaning if I get back into my slime here and I add in the exact same tag, okay, but change the uh, stuff around, so this goes back to 100 now, so do you. I change the battle theme to other things like battle two, then battle one, and battle three. Um, every single time I enter battle with the slime, it will always, always play battle eight because this is the first match it finds. In Rubula, it actually it actually says it can match all of these, but in RPG Maker, the way we're currently doing it, it will only find battle eight because that is the first match it finds, and that is the only one it cares about. All right, so the way to get past that and make it match all of these is to use a string method, and there is one. So if I open my help and go to contents, I type in scan. This is what the method name is. Scan. It's in string, and I go down. There you are. As you can see here, it even actually shows you what it does with the actual regular expression. Repeatedly matches against self with regular expression. RE and returns an array of matching substrings. Pretty cool, right? Alright. Alright, so if you scan it, if you use a scan on a string, which is what the notebox is, remember, it's a string, 
it will return these kinds of things. So this one is going regular expression uh, BA and then the dot, which remember the dot means, you know, anything. Anything at all. Which means it comes back with bar and then baz and then bar and then baz. Uh, what? Okay. So it's going foo bar baz. So the first one it finds is bar, then baz. And then it does, and then it searches up the the exact same uh, word again, and gets barbaz. So if I was actually use this with the array brackets, it would only find me bar, not this whole uh, list that has here. Okay, so that's what we have to use. We're going to use scan, and that is going to return you an array. All right. So let's do this. We're going to go notebox. And instead of going that, we're going to go dot scan in array bra uh, parentheses. Alright, now I'm just going to comment that out for a moment. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go, um, I'm just going to go contents from now. That will work for me, contents. Then message box underscore P. I did plus, I want underscore, P. Tell me what the contents are of that array. Alright? And now, when I go into battle... Alright? It has now got a 2D array. Alright? So the first one it showed, it's the first one it found is battle 8, 100, 100, battle 2, battle 1, battle 3. And that has returned us a 2D array of each element we currently have. Um, so now what we're going to do is, there is actually an array method, which does some pretty cool things. So, hmm, should I show that or do a different way? I'm not really sure. Hmm, I think I might, and I close the help window while I do that. Right, and this is called collect. It's for your array, if it's here somewhere, it should be. It's called array. Yes, array, and show me collect. No, you don't have collect. I know you do. Okay. Alright, the health file doesn't seem to have it, but I know there is actually one called collect. Alright, so what we're going to do is contents contents dot collect alright and this is basically a for loop somewhat actually you know let's use a for loop yeah, for loop works you can do a for loop go for element in contents which will return you obviously the uh array inside of an array. So print the element. Just print it out of the console for now. Do uh, collect in a moment. Alright, there you go. So, uh, battle 1, uh, battle A, battle 2, battle 1, battle 3, and this is this one scanning the second slide. Alright. So, it does return an array, and it does... It is a 2D array. All right. So now let's do contents dot uh, collect. Contents dot collect, and this is done inside of this curly bracket. I do not know what this is actually called. All right, and obviously this takes. You want to have a name for the uh, element it's currently giving you. So this one's just going to be element. Same as before. Element, and that will return the exact same thing as the for loop. Uh, Alright, and what you can do is, you can actually go down there. What you can do is, since it's the exact same as the for loop, you can go, you know, zero is this, zero that. So I can go a new array here, or I can go P, and I can go message box underscore P works. Nope, I'll do P. Um, element zero, which will return the actual string. 
And I'll do the exact same. One, two. Really? Don't have collect. I remember you having collect. Hang on, give me a sec. Oh, silly, silly me. Um, actually. Go there. And I can get rid of contents now, I don't need that. Alright. Okay. Lay. Take me to said lady. Eh. Why you do this? One of the best parts about scripting is when you realize you've done something really stupid and you didn't know it. Damn it! Three L's! Three freaking L's! Alright, show me, show me the working things now. There we go. Like I said, it's like a full loop, so... Uh, battle A, 100, 100, battle 2, 100, 100, and battle 1, 3, and so on. Alright, so it's just like a full loop in that regard, where it returns the elements. Um, of the array you're currently processing. And stores it into a secondary array. Yay! Alright, so what I'm going to do is... I'm going to keep that as contents like we had before, so I'm going to get rid of these. I don't need collect anymore, you troublesome thing, you. Contents is equal to that, and I'm then going to go... Index is equal to uh, contents, nope, rand contents, not constants, contents dot size. Alright, now I don't remember if I ever spoke what rand does before, but it returns you a random number generated by what you've inputted. Okay, so uh, contents of size, I currently have four different uh, stuff inside contents, I think. It's four, right? Yes, it is four. Alright, so I have four, and the uh, randomizer is going to give me a number between one, uh, zero, one, two, and three. Okay, so it's going to give me a number um, between one, zero, one, two, and three, but not four. That is the size of it. Okay, so. When it returns that number to me, I'm then going to use an index to access uh, the uh, array inside contents, and then use that to access the uh, stuff. All right. So the uh, scan has done exactly what we've asked it to do. It has scanned the multiple instances instances of the regex, and it has found four matches. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go take that. I don't need that now. Okay, and get rid of that. Since if it's in the actual array, we know that it currently works. Alright, and now what we're going to do is contents, that size, we're going to go n, you know, for name, uh, contents, contents, index, which, which remember returns the actual uh, element we're going to use. So remember, this is a 2D array, so we have. The um, what the uh, index here is doing, this index variable, it's returning the uh, array inside of that array that we are going to currently be accessing. All right. So remember, what we're doing right now is getting the array inside of an array. All right. So now for the name, that is the first element of that array that we are currently accessing. So that's zero. Remember. All right. So that's name, and then volume is v. So that's going to be contents index uh, and that will be one because that's the second element and obviously that's going to be a string so you have to go dot two i All right pitch is equal to the same thing but this is the uh, next element which is two so and again two i because that will return it as a string All right and now inside bgm.u you just go n v p and 
boom, every single time you fight a slime, it should be a different one now. Okay. Next. Alright, so now I play the battle two. Next. Back to battle one. Okay. Give me a battle eight. No, I want battle eight. Trying to make a point here. Damn it, you! Come on. Give me another one. Yeah, that's what I hate about Brandon sometimes. Damn you! There we go. Oh, that's number four. The not, not, the one, not the one I wanted, but whatever. It, it's proven my point. Okay? So that is how you get the different... Uh, that's how you get multiple matches. You have to go to the notebox, dot scan. So I can actually just get rid of all this, get uh, rid of this all together and just go... Uh, give me that. I can just go this. Do that. Okay. Okay. So I can just do contents is equal to data underscore enemies, enemy dot enemy data, enemy ID I mean, dot no dot scan, you know, that. I don't even have to have that there, I just have it there for clarity, so I can just go... See? And as you see, it gets really messy really quickly. Which is the reason why I had it the way I had it before. Like that. Alright. Index, as was stated already, gets you a random number between 0 and 4. Because that's the constant size, so I can go back in there and I can put in a, l a lot more um, elements. Would you give me a high number or a less number if I reduce it? Alright, and the NVP here is just getting the name, then the volume, and then the pitch. Alright, so that's all for that. And I'm going to go back into here now, and I'm going to put, add in some random gibberish in between these two. Yay! Alright, and if I go back over here, and I message by someone's called P the note tag. Better yet, not the note tag, the contents will work for me. Contents, message box underscore P. P. Contents. I should not find that gibberish. And there you go. I don't find the gibberish, which means the regular expression is working exactly as intended. So that's pretty much how you get multiple matches of regular expression inside of a inside of a note box or in any string for that matter. Regular expression is not um, tied down to the note boxes of your of your data underscore whatever. A note box is just a string. That is all it is. If you want to use regular expression on any variable that is a string, you're more than welcome to. You're, you, in fact, you're able to, so go for it if you want to. Alright, so that's all for this tutorial. And... Oh, damn it, script. And now you pretty much know what you need to know about regular expression. Give or take, if you don't already know or haven't been practicing, it really isn't that hard for regular expression. It just... it it it's overwhelming at first. And I get it. It's the exact same for when you first start programming. It it all seems overwhelming until you do it for a little while, and then it doesn't seem to bother you that much anymore. You've understood, you know, the basics. You're happy with it. So, really, if you if you're not too sure about regular expression, just go on Rubular and play around with it. You'll be fine. Don't worry. All right. So that's all for this tutorial. And until next time, stay safe.